Good afternoon everyone, myself Dr. C. Maria from ECV department. Today I am going to discuss about 8086 microprocessor. First we are going to be seeing about evaluation of microprocessor. Intel introduced its first 4-bit microprocessor 4004 in 1971 and it is 8-bit microprocessor in 1972 that is 8008. The microprocessor could not survive as general purpose processor due to their design and performance limitation. The first general purpose 8-bit microprocessor 8080 was launched in 1974 and later in 1977. The main limitations of 8-bit microprocessor were their low speed, low memory addressing capability, limited number of general purpose registers and less power of powerful instruction set. First, we are going to see about introduction to 8086 microprocessor. An 8086 microprocessor is a 40 pin dip chip based in channel depletion load silicon key technology. The TAM 16-bit means it supports 16-bit AI units, arithmetic logical unit. It, its internal registers and most of the instructions are designed to work with 16-bit binary words. 8086 is available different clock peaks, that is 5 MHz, 8 MHz and 10 MHz. 8086 microprocessor has a 16-bit data bus and 1DBit address bus. So it can address 1 of 2, the 2 power 20, that is 1 MB memory location. The 8086 microprocessor can work in two modes that is minimum mode and the maximum mode. In minimum mode, the mode of operation of the microprocessor is not associated with any coprocessor and cannot be used for multiprocessor system. But in maximum mode, the 8086 can work with multiprocessor or coprocessor configuration. The minimum and maximum operations are decided by the pin MN or MX that is active mode. When the pin is high, 8086 operates minimum mode and otherwise it operates in maximum mode. And the main specifications of 8086 are the 16-bit microprocessor, it has 20-bit address, it can access up to 1 MB locations. It can support up to 64K I.O. ports, it provides 14 16-bit registers, it has multiplex address and data bus, this is A D0 to A D15 and A16 to A19. It requires single phase clock with 33% duty cycle to provide internal timing. Prefetches up to 16 section bytes from memory and queues them in order to speed up the processing. The prefetches of uh, uh, instruction 16 section is the main specification of 8086. Block diagram of 8086. Now we are going to discuss about the architecture of 8086. This is the architecture diagram of 8086. This architecture diagram will be split up into two parts. The first one is bus interface unit and the second one is E unit. In the bus interface unit, we are having three parts. The first one is the instruction queue that is we are going to fetch the six instruction that is called the instruction stream byte queue and we are going to have some segment register and for the calculation we are having this bus calculation memory interface and in the execution unit we are having the general purpose register other than that we are having stack pointer base pointer source index station index and with that we are going to calculate the arithmetic logic unit and uh, for the arithmetic operations we are by using the arithmetic logic unit we are calculating the arithmetic logical calculations and the result will be uh, stored in the operand Thus we are having the results. If you if you want to have any other results means we have used this flags. And 8086 is divided into two independent sections. They are bus interface unit and execution unit. Bus interface endows address, fetches in section, read data from ports and memory and write data to ports and memory. That is the bus. BAU handle all transfers of data and address on the bus are required by the execution unit. Whereas the execution, the second part of execution, uh, the second part of the 8086 architecture tells the BAU where to fetch the instruction or data from decodes the instruction and executes the instruction. Uh, there are two different uh, sections in the 8086. The first one is bus interface unit and the another one is execution unit. In the bus interface unit, the bus interface just send us the address and fetch the instruction, read data or write data. And uh, the execution unit tells the BAU to where to fetch the instruction or data from or decodes the instruction and executes the instruction. The bus interface unit contains the circuit for physical address calculation, the first part, the second one pre decoding instruction by six instruction fetches, and the third one four 16 bit segment register that is extra segment, code segment, stack segment, data segment, and the fourth one is 16 bit instruction pointer. The next execution unit contains the following uh, parts in the execution unit. The first one is control circuitry, instruction decode, decoder, and ALU. 
and the next one is 16 bit flag register and the next one is 4 16 bit general purpose register that is AX, BX, CX and DX and the next one is 16 bit pointer register that is stack pointer and base pointer and a 16 bit index register source index and destination index and in execution unit what is, what is the main purpose of this control circuitry is nothing but the execution unit contains control circuitry which directs internal operations a decoder in the EU translates instruction fetched from memory into a series of action which the EU carries out. The execution unit has 16 bit arithmetic logic unit which can add, subtract, and or exhort, increment, decrement, complement, or shift binary numbers. The flag registers. Next one is flag register. The 8086 16 bit flag registers contains indicate the results of competition in the EU. Just uh, here the 16 bit flag register's content only indicate the result of uh, comp computation in the AIDO. It also contains some flag bits to control the CPU operations. A flag is a flip flop that indicates some condition produced by the execution of instruction or controls certain operations of the EU. And the next we are going to see about the general purpose register. All these registers of 8086 microprocessor can be used for arithmetic and logical operations. The general registers are AX, BX, CX, DX and the SP is the stack pointer. AX is the accumulator register, BX is the base register, CX is counter register, DX is data register and SP is stack pointer. This is the accumulator register. It first one is AX, it is the accumulator register. It gets used in arithmetic, logic and data transfer instruction. In manipulation and division, one of the numbers involved must be AX or AL. And the next one is base register. Base register is, is, is an address register which usually contains data pointer for the based, based index or register entire addressing. The next one is CX count register. This serves as loop counter. Program loop constructions are facilitated by it. Count registers can be also be used as counter in string manipulation and shift bar or rotate instruction. And the next one is data register. This is data register. Data register can be used as a port number and IO operation. It is also used in manipulation and division. And the next one is stack pointer. This stack pointer register pointing to program to stack. It is used in conjunction with stack segment for accessing the stack segment. And the next one is base pointer. This is a base point register pointing to data instead of a stack segment. Unlike stack segment, we can use Base pointer to access data in other segment. And the next one is source index. The source index is used to find memory location in the data segment and address by the data segment. By incrementing the contents of source index, one can easily access consecutive memory location. And the next one is destination index. This is destination index, which is the performs the same function as SI. There is a class of instruction called string operations that use DA to access the memory location addressed by AS. The next one is A, which is arithmetic and logic unit. This unit can perform various arithmetic and logical operation if required based on the instruction to be executed. It can perform arithmetic operations such as add, subtract, convert byte or word, increment, decrement, convert, etc. And logical operations such as and, or, exclusive or, shift bar, rotate, and test, etc. Software model of the 8086 microprocessor. And this is the software model of 8086 microprocessor. Here we are having the external memory space and the external code segment, data segment, stack segment, extra segment. And the first here in the left side we are having the uh, memory space for the code, data, stack segment and extra segment. And followed by that we are having the general purpose register AX, BX and DX. These four are the general purpose registers of 8086 microprocessor. And other than that we are having stack pointer, base pointer, source index and destination index. And the last one is the segment register. And the memory allocations will be having the uh, having for each code segment, data segment, stack segment, and extra segment. This is the memory allocation for the four segment registers. These are the 8086 registers. The first one is general purpose, that is AX, BX, CX, DX. These four are the general purpose register. And the index are BP, that is back, base pointer, stack pointer, source index, and destination. Other than that, we are having segment register, four segment register, that is core segment, stack segment, data segment, and extra segment. C is its core segment, S is its stack segment, and D is its data segment, E is its extra segment. And other than general purpose, 
index and segment register. We are having other two registers, that is status and control register. And status is nothing but flag register. There are six flag, uh, normal status flag and three control flags are there. In is, there is, and the next control register is instruction pointer. This instruction pointer will have the control to point out the next instruction to the execution unit. Next, we are going to see about the general purpose register. And these are the general purpose register AX accumulator, BX base register, CX counter, and DX used to find data in IO operation. And the next AX is accumulator, base register, counter register, data register. Normally, we are using this general purpose register for storing temporary register. Each of the registers is 16 bit wide AX, BX, CX, and DX. And can be accessed as either 16 or 8 bits. And we can use this AX, that is, we are going to access the whole 16 bit. Or for AH, or we are going to access for only the high bits, that is A to 15, or AL, that is, we are going to access for 0 to 7, the lower bits. Next, we just we are going to see about what is accumulator register. And AX is accumulator register. It prefers register to use an automatic logic and data to instruction because it generates the shortest machine language code. Must be, must be used in multiplication and division operations. Must also be used in IO operations. The next one is BX register, that is base registers, also serves as an address register. This BX is also called as address register. The next register is CX. CX is a count register, used as a loop counter, it is used in shift and rotate operations. The next one is DX, that is data register, used in multiplication and division, also used in IO operation. The next one is pointer and index register. These are some of the pointer, that is stack pointer, base pointer, source index, destination index and instruction pointer. This instruction pointer is used as a control register. And then this instruction pointer and index registers are all registers are 16 bit bytes, that is lower and higher bits are not accessible. Only we are going to access the whole 16 bit, that is AX or BX or CX, we are going to access the whole 16 bit. We are not going to access the a lower bit higher bit. It is not possible to access the lower bit or higher bits of the accessible. Use this memory pointers. Example, move AH comma source index. Here we are going to uh, access the memory where the mem this pointer is. That is, as is the source index, we are going to move the source index to AH register. Move the bytes stored in the memory location whose address is contained in register SI to register AH. IP is not in the direct control of the program because I insertion pointer is the control register. Flag register. Now we are going to see about the flag register. And these are the flags. Just we are going to have the different types of flags. <coughs> the first one is OF flag, overflow. That is the second one is DF flag. That is direction flag. And the third one is IF flag. And this is interrupt enable and the next one is tf flag that is trap flag and the next one is sf then sf is the with sign flag and the next one is zf zf is zero flag and the next one is a flag af is nothing but axillary flag and the next one is pf flag pf is nothing but parity flag and the next one is cf cf is carry flag these are the flags in a086 this is the flag register the total there are nine flags are there overflow direction interpretable trap sign zero axillary carry parity and carry flag in these nine flags only six flags are used for status purpose and three flags are used for control purpose here six are status flags the uh, the color orange indicate the flags which is all status flags and the three color green indicate flags or control flags overflow sign zero axillary carry parity carry these are the status flags and direction interpretable trap or control flags these are the flag registers in 8086 microprocessor and next we are going to see about 8086 programmer model how it is have we are having the programmer model and uh, just what are the program model we are having in BA register and EA register. In BA register that is 20 bit data we are having the uh, 5 different segment. The first one is extra segment, core segment, data segment, stack segment. And the last was instruction pointer and this instruction pointer is used as a control flag because this instruction pointer is used to point out the next instruction which is going to execute. And the next one is execution is register or uh, there is execution unit register here. 
other as accumulated base register, count register, data register, stack pointer, base pointer, source index register, destination index register, and flags. Now we are going to discuss about stack. What is called stack? The stack is used for temporary storage of information such as data or addresses. When a call is executed, the 8086 automatically pushes the current value of code segment and IP onto the stack. First, this code segment will push the current value and IP get the current value and to the stack and other registers can also be pushed. Before return from the subroutine, pop instruction can be used to pop values back from the stack into the corresponding register. Just in the stack, we are going to have the two operations push and pop. Push the instruction to the current value and pop the instruction which is uh, just which is which have completed the routine. The next one, this is a stack model and this is the push and pop operation. First bottom of stack, we are going to push the instruction and the end of the stack, you are going to pop the instruction. The next, we are going to see about 8086 pin diagram. This is a pin diagram of 8086 and in this 8086 microprocessor, we have a total 40 pins and uh, 2 pins for ground and 1 pin, one pin for power supply and we are going to have 20 bits for addresses and 16 bits for data. Here the first pin and 28 pin is for ground and the 48 pin is for power supply. Here address pin number 1 to address pin A19, now just A, D0, this address pin 0 to address pin 19 is for address and A, D0, D is nothing but for data. So we are having the pin uh, just 16 pin just uh, number 2 to 16 and from and, and the pin 39 these pins are used for both address and data and because we are having the data pin as 16 bit and the address pin as 20 bit so we are having the data and address pin as 20 bits as well as data we have in 16 bit and here the other pin is nmi that is non maskable interrupt when we are going to have the interrupt we are going to give the interrupt just interrupt request when the interrupt request is came, we are going to give the interrupt acknowledgement that is will be shown in the 24th pin. When the interrupt will be given, we are giving the acknowledgement, just we are going to access the interrupt. 19th pin is for clock and the next, the 34th pin is for bus high enable, that is BHD is nothing but bus high enable. Other than that, we are having some status pin A0 to A7 and 33 pin is for maximum or minimum mode. In A086 microprocessor, we are having two modes. It is maximum mode and minimum mode and maximum mode if you are going to want to access the maximum mode uh, just whenever the processor is 0 a6 in high just we are going to access the minimum mode other than we are going to have the maximum rt bar is nothing but read and rq bar is nothing but just we are going to have the hold operation and first we are going to give the hold operation in 31 next we are going to give the gold acknowledgement get the gold acknowledgement 38 pin and 29th pin is for WR that is the right operation and 28th pin is for status other, uh, as well as we are going to have the memory or IO interface and 27th pin for is also for status other than that we are going to use for data transmit or receive 26th is in for status and other than that we are having data enable pin and 25th pin is for just logical enable so when we are uh, just uh, with that we are having also having the status pin and 24th pin is also used for status and interrupt acknowledgement. 23rd pin is for test pin. And 22 is ready whenever if your processor is co-processor is ready, you can access this 22nd pin. And 21st pin is for reset. Totally we have 40 pins. Upon these 40 pins, we are having 20 address bits and uh, 16 data bits. And other than that, we have interrupt, bus, bus enable, read, write, status pins and data receive or transmit. And this is the pin diagram. Here we are going to do first pin is the ground pin and the 20 pins are also ground pin. And these P2 pins are for ground. And the next one is clock. And the next one is uh, just this clock is with 33% duty cycle. And the next one is VCC that is for power supply. And the next one is the reset pin. Just registers segment registers or flags anything we are having you can click for just have four clocks for the recent things and the next one is address with ad0 to ad14 this is in here ad0 to ad14 just this is used as an address as well as data pins 
and AD15, AD0 to AD15 and uh, just, uh, just here the 0 to 50 will be access as data as well as address. And these are the address for data bus contains address bits A15 to A0 when A is 1, data bits D15 to D0 when A is 0. But just we are going to win that arithmetic logical rule is 1, we are going to access the address bits A15 to just A0 to A15. When data just when the arithmetic logical level is 0, we are going to access the bits only data D0 to D15. Other than that, this is the ALE pin. Whenever the ALE is 1, only address will be accessible. Whenever the ALE is 0, only data is accessible. And the next one is interrupt. And here, interrupt is we are going to have the non maskable interrupt. Interrupt requires here INDR is interrupt requires and INDA is interrupt acknowledgement. And next we are going to see about direct memory access which are the pin we are going to use for the direct memory access. And these are the pin used for the direct memory access. If you want to access the memory directly, you can give and hold uh, just hold request. If, if you want to, if the processor want to give the acknowledgement to the hold request means the HLD, yeah, there is hold acknowledgement will be given to the processor. Then directly you can access the memory. And the next one is A16 to A90. This bits are used as an address bar status bits. Address bits and status bits S2 to S6. S6 is logic 0, S bits indicate indication of IF flags and S4 and S3 indicate whether which segment is accessed during the current bus cycle. Here this is the uh, truth table for the function that is how we are going to calculate the extra segment, stack segment, code or data segment. Whenever the status bits S4 and S3 will be 0 and 0, this is called as extra segment. And whenever it is B0 and 1, it is called stack segment. Whenever the status bit S4 and S3 will be 1 and 0, code or no segment. Whenever the status bit S4 and S3 1, 1, it will be in data segment. And the next one is BH and BH is nothing but bus high enable and this is also called S7 that is status with S7. Enable most significant data bits D8 to D15 during read or write operation. S7 always B1. And the next one BH you just there is what are the bits possible for the BH. Whenever the bit is 0 comma 0 it will be whole bar that is 6 bit 0 comma 1 high by 2 or from order address 1 0 low by 2 from order address 1 1 there is no selection and the next one is minimum or maximum and for minimum and maximum minimum mode will be 5 volt and maximum mode will be uh, 0 volt and for next minimum these are the minimum mode pins hold hold a write this maximum uh, mini memory or IO data transfer or receive data enable that is arithmetic logical enable that is interim acknowledgement these are the minimum mode pins and the next one, request, just whenever you are going to give the request to access the co-processor, then the maximum more pins will have and with the maximum more pins, most of the status pins are associated with the maximum more pins. And the next one is RD, RD is nothing but read signal and the next one is WR, WR is the write signal and the next one is M bar, IO bar is the memory or IO and the next one is DD bar, R is the data transmit or receive and the next one is then there is data bus enable and the next one is uh, S2, S1 bar and S2 bar. These are status signal inputs to A2, A2 to A2 generate eliminate discipline to maximum mode. Whenever you are going connecting the co-processor to the A0, A6, at the time we are going to use this signals. And S2, S1, 0 and what are the three inputs possible. Whenever the S2, S1, 0, uh, S1, S0 pins are in 000, there is internet acknowledgement. 001 means read IO port. 010 means write IO port. 011 means hard. 100 means code access. 101 means read memory. 110 means write memory. 111 means non pass. And the next one is request GD bar 0 and the request GD. Here this is the direct memory access request and grant. When we are going to access the direct memory, uh, this request pin and GD pin will be used. If you uh, just there are two pin request and grant, request GD 0 and request GD 1. Then it is log output. If you want to uh, log the output, you can use this log pin. Use to log peripherals of the system. Uh, this peripheral is nothing but 
and uh, this uh, other process, go process, which is connected to the 8086 process using the peripheral interfaces for the peripherals. Used to lock the peripheral off of the, of the system, activated by using the lock prefix on any instruction. And the next one is QSO and QS1, that is Q status, used by numeric co processor. And this 8086 processor having the advantage of uh, doing co processor, multi processor with this. And this Q, uh, Q status is used for the co processor. But now the 00 is in uh, Q. S1 and Q is 1, Q is idle, 0 1 first byte of output, 1 0 Q is empty and 1 1 is subsequent byte of output. And the next one is this, are, this is the minimum mode system, 8086 system and this is the we are having the VCC power supply and here we are going to have the DMA in uh, this uh, three types of interface, the first one is interrupt interface, the add memory interface, modes are like this, we are going to select for maximum or minimum mode. Here the total address or data we see there, address slash enable is there and the next one is status signal pins are there and the next IO bar memory pin is there, data bar transmit read or uh, just receive pin is there, read or write, then data enable ready pin is there. This is the minimum mode of 8086 microprocessor. And this is the minimum mode secure diagram. Here, uh, just the how uh, the the main uh, memory interface, how the memory uh, interface with this uh, minimum mode of 8086 microprocessor. Here, the two pins in the clock generator that is ready pin and reset. If you want to access the core processor or if you want to access the main 8086 processor, pin, the ready pin is there. The next one is reset pin. If you want, if you want to reset the pin, the reset you can, you can click the reset pin. Here, uh, maximum mode and minimum mode uh, selection. And the next one is for memory IO interface selection, internal acknowledgement, read, write, data enable, and next automatic logical enable, next bus enable, data transmit or receiver. In the automatic logical enable, we are having the latches, and with this adder, we are having the address bus. And for the data receive or uh, transmit, we are having the data receive and transmit trans receivers. This is the RAM, we have uh, just RAM, EPRO, and IO, IO uh, sections we are having. In RAM, what is the read? read and write and next code segment is there next one is code segment what is the code segment and what is the overflow we are having then i go the code segment read and write are there this is the minimum mode 8086 system and ready read cycle timing diagram for minimum mode here whenever the uh, clock is in high position and the read uh, just we are having the read and uh, write operations there just uh, uh, just note down, note, note down the address bin and the data pin and whenever the clock is in high position we are going to the read operation and what is the data and transmit try to transmit and receive operations visible here and next this is the for write cycle whenever the uh, data just uh, just we are going to calculate the what is the right more right timing diagram in minimum mode whenever we are having the clock signal t2 uh, having high to low here you are going to use the uh, write signal as high to low next data enable and data transmit for receiver is just we are going to start the data bus. and the data transmit or receiver is a signal from low to high and the next one is maximum eight, mode 8086 this we are having the same like in the precursor in the acknowledgement because in this maximum mode you are going to connect the maximum mode of the co-processor of 8086 and we are going to connect the other processor with the 8086 whenever you want to access the co-processor other than 8086 microprocessor you can use this co-processor and we are, we are just we are going to select the maximum mode and whenever you are selecting the maximum mode you are going to give the interrupt precursor then by getting the interrupt acknowledgement using the interrupt acknowledgement you can write and the co-processor here the same interrupt interface memory interface mode selected are there and address buses are there and the same like that address latch enable and uh, this bus I enable memory or IO controls data receive or transmit read write and data enable and the ready pin is there and this is the maximum mode of 8086 system here the reset ready pin is the same like that here you are going to use the uh, just only the status pin and with this status pin you are going to have the uh, mode as maximum mode here we are having the control of control bus which is having the data enable data transfer the receiver that is in the uh, or this is just uh, write or read and uh, memory write or read these are the main uh, just to go browser browser next we are going to connect it, connect the addresses with the latches that is memory and going to save the result of the uh, go browser that is peripheral interface browser to the uh, buffers that is in the memory maximum mode 8086 system here either a numeric co-processor of the 8087 or another processor is interface with 8086 
the memory address bus data bus or shared resources between the two processes the control signal for maximum mode of operation generated by the bus control chip a7a the three status output that is a0 s1 s2 from the processor are input to the a2 sound a7a the output of the bus control are the two signals namely den data transfer receiver that is i or read or i or write memory write or memory read and a etc memory read timing in maximum mode this is uh, memory read timing whenever whenever the t1 is in high position you can have the memory read uh, this uh, read condition and data read uh, data receiver and transfer condition here this is the main uh, function of the signals a0 to s2 a0 s1 s2 whenever the three pins are in zero in the acknowledge with the 001 means i will read 010 means i will write 0 double means hard 1 double zero is output fetch 101 is memory read 110 is memory write and triple one is passive this is a bus control function generated by the bus control using s2 s1 and s0 memory write timing mode max in maximum mode and if here the zero the same zero zero is for interpret knowledge one is for i read and one zero one zero is for i write double one is halt one double zero is upward fetch one zero is memory read double one zero is memory write one 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 is passive yes when you are having the one 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 is that is passive condition now we are going to discuss about 8086 control signals and these are the control signals of 8086 microprocessor this is automatic latch enable bus high enable memory io this memory or io operation data transmit or receive operation read write or data enable and the next one co processor and multi processor configuration multi processor system refer to the use of multi bit processor that execute instructions simultaneously and communicate with each other using mailboxes and semaphores Maximum mode of 8086 is designed to implement three basic multiprocessor configuration. The first one is coprocessor, and the second one is closely loop, and third one is multipass. The closely loop is nothing but 8089. First, we are going to discuss about coprocessor and closely loop coupled configuration. Here, coprocessor and closely coupled configuration are similar in that both of both the 8086 and external processor shares the memory io system bus and bus control logic clock generator here this in this both condition just we are going to access the memory io system bus and bus control logic clock generator of 8086 microprocessor here we are, we are not having any different memory or io system or bus control logic or clock generator for other coprocessor just we are going to have to connect the coprocessor but the coprocessor is going to activate the or going to access the uh, memory io system bus or bus control logic clock generator of 8086 microprocessor coprocessor bus loosely coupled configuration this is the coprocessor bus uh, loosely coupled and this coprocessor or independent processor will activate the will access the 8086 microprocessor bus control logic memory and io of just 8086 microprocessor and what are the test pin of 8086 used in conjunction with the wait instruction in multi processing in roman this is input from the 8087 coprocessor during execution of a wait instruction the cpu checks the signal if it is low execution of the signal will continue if it is not it will stop the executing coprocessor execution example and this is the coprocessor execution example coprocessor cannot take control of the bus it does everything through the cpu here the first one is the 8086 or 8088 pro microprocessor and then the right side we are going to connect the coprocessor whenever just we are going to uh, just connect the coprocessor uh, the seac signal will wake up the coprocessor and ask the coprocessor to activate the main thing. and whenever the uh, coprocessor is activating uh, just if you want to uh, deactivate or anything just uh, the host host there is a0 is the host it will deactivate the host and test pin and execute the fire specific operation then activate the test pin and wake up the a0 a6 or a8 and uh, for this type we are just this uh, go processor will be just uh, putting the a0 a6 or a8 processor in a wait state and then next one closely coupled processor may take control of the bus independently Two eight zero eight six cannot be closely. Two eight zero eight six microprocessor cannot be closely coupled. And this is the example of uh, closely coupled 
8086 bar 8380 uh, first we are going to wake up the independent processor wait for the request if the uh, if the processor is uh, wake up it wait for the request if the request is came it fetch the message for perform the request task and uh, give the result to the main processor if uh, just uh, if the cpu will be completed the processing is completed means it give the notify to the uh, just uh, ready ready pin to the 8086 mother processor then the 8086 uh, ready 8086 ready pin will access the 8086 mother processor and this is here the co processor is an independent processor just you are going to access the uh, wake up the mother processor co processor and then do the following uh, just necessary action fetch the message or perform the task then you are going to uh, just uh, indicate in the completion of the uh, task to the ready pin and the next one is loosely coupled configuration and the loosely coupled configuration is nothing but it has shared bus system memory and system io each processor has its own block clock as well as its own memory in addition to access system resources used for medium to large model system each model is capable of being bus master any model could be processor capable of being bus master a go processor configuration or a closely coupled configuration and the next no direction connection between the models each share the system bus and communicate through shared resources processor in their separate model can simultaneously access their private subsystem through their local buses and perform their local data references and instruction fetches the independently this results in improved degree of concurrent processing excellent for real time applications as separate models can be assigned such specialized tasks advantage of multi processor configuration high system throughput can be achieved by having more than one cpu the system can be expanded in modular form each bus master model is an independent unit and normally resides on a separate pc board one can be added or removed without affecting the others in the system a failure in one model normally does not affect the breakdown of the entire system and the faulty model can be easily redirected and replaced each bus master has its own local bus to access dedicated memory or io device so greater degree of parallel processing can be achieved here the parallel processing is nothing but pipe planning process pipe planning process is nothing but fetch decode execute the parallelly you are going to feed, uh, fetch the data decode the data and execute the data the parallel processing is nothing but pipe planning process here how the wait state is enabled in the co processor a wait state tw is an extra clocking period inserted between t2 and t2 to lengthen the bus cycle allowing slower memory and io components to respond ready input is sampled at the end of the t2 and again if necessary in the middle of tw if ready is zero then at tw is zero whenever you want to have the wait state wait state you can have the wait state clocking period this tw is inserted between the clocks uh, these are the two different modes of 8086 map architecture there is maximum mode and the memory mode Uh, today we are have we have been discuss about what is 8086 microprocessor and what is the architecture diagram of 8086 microprocessor and pin diagram of 8086 microprocessor and what are the different registers we have been using the 8086 and what are the flag registers and control registers in 8086 microprocessor thank you